Welcome to the story so far. This is episode number four. And today we're going to talk about how to analyze a property deal in 30 seconds or less. That means analyzing the numbers and making sure that that particular property, that particular deal that you are looking at is going to put money in your pocket. Okay. Now there's a couple ways you can do that and we're going to cover those here. But before we get to that, um, there's a couple of things that I want to make sure that, especially for you newbies out there, you understand some of the property lingo. I've seen the language and the terms and the things you need to know to uh, be able to analyze and talk to agents and so on. Okay? There's obviously a lot more terms and, and, and uh, concepts and things like that that you need to know. But mind you, you will be working with a broker. You will be working with a conveyancer. And things like that so don't worry about knowing everything these are the ones that you need to know so when you're out there in the field looking for properties talking to agents uh, or sitting at home analyzing prospective areas prospective properties you will know exactly what to look at okay now first of all medium price so the medium price is used to uh, as an indication of the prices within an area okay but remember it's not it's not the average okay why is it important why is it important for me and what do I look at when I look at the medium price the medium price is a good signal of the volume of sales the price wise that happen in an area okay the majority going back to our five hundred thousand dollar example the majority of the transactions in that area will be five hundred thousand that is two things you're not going to be buying the castle in the sand as in a property that is worth too much in an area that it may uh, not be worth it. Those are when the, when the market tightens, those are properties that do come down in price. And the other, the other thing that is it, it's important um, for me here is knowing that the majority of my buyers are going to be looking at properties around that area as well. So if I need to sell it, in the case of an emergency, I never sell, but I have sold properties over time. It means that I will have a lot, the largest pool of buyers available in the area, okay, in case I need to have an exit strategy, all right? Now, the next one is the volume of sales. The volume of sales uh, indicates the momentum of how hot a property is, okay? It's expressed in a number. So say, for example, if you look at a particular suburb, Last year sales around this time of the year were 200 and now they're 400. Okay, you can see there's some momentum in the market. You can see there's a lot of things going on there. It's obviously a good indicator of how hot the market is and how much momentum and how many people are uh, going in and out of that particular market at any given time. Okay, it is expressed again in a number. Okay, so you normally will see 300, 400, depending on the size of the particular area or suburb that you're looking at. The other one that you want to be across is vacancy rates. Okay, it is expressed as a percentage. And, it, and an agent will give it to you, and there's a lot of research papers, there's a lot of free information these days online that will give you that vacancy rate. It means that if it's below, say, 1%, for example, it is expre expressed as a percentage, it'll mean the tenants literally are lining up to live in that area. So that's pretty good. I would never buy anything that's over 2%, by the way. Uh, so to me, anything about two percent means that it could it, the property can be vacant, you know, three four weeks at any given time or more. Okay, if a tenant decides to vacate, so that's uh, to me that's a bit of an insurance policy. So something really important. Vacancy rate again expresses a percentage. Very important. Now, uh, I did say that we were going to talk about analyzing the property deal in thirty seconds or less. And we will. By the way, though, this is just a quick snapshot, back of the envelope type of calculations, okay? Properly, you can do it properly by using a software, and that will calculate the return of investment. I'll come back to that in a second. But let's just say, for example, you're out in the field and you see a property that is worth 250000 There's a tenant in place, or the, the agent tells you that property is rented or can be potentially rented by $300 a week. This is how you calculate the yield. Okay, the yield is another of those concepts and formulas that you need to be across, which is very simple. It's the rent times 52, as in weeks in the year, divided by the price of the property, 
and then multiply by 100 because the yield is a percentage, okay? As in 6% return, 8% return, I'm sure you get the drift. So this particular example, we put in a rent, 300 in the formula, times 52 weeks per year, 250,000 divided by, which is the price of the property, that gives me a 6.2% yield. Now, why this is important, it's, it's your gross return on that property, okay? Note the word, note the word gross investment, okay? We're not, uh, it's not your uh, full return just yet, but the, the way that I like to simplify it, especially when I'm out there in the deal, uh, in the field, and I want to know that a particular property is going to be putting money in my pocket, is very simple. If my income is 6.2%, if my mortgage, underlying mortgage is 4% to the bank. Now, and my expenses are 1.8%, this property, give or take, it's going to be positive 0.4%. Okay, this is a very simplified way of analyzing a property, but when you're out in the field and you don't have a software to do the more complex calculation, then this is a good way of doing that. Now, by the way, expenses at 30% of my income, okay? You, you always better off overestimating, overestimating expenses and underestimating income. For example, if, it, uh, if the property is not uh, tenanted and the agent tells you, ah, oh, that's at least 320 a week, I would seriously recommend that you work out your scenario by underestimating the rent and always overestimate your expenses. The reason that I put 30% here is that I've owned property for almost 20 years and my property expenses do average between 25% to 30% per property per year, okay? I know that's a lot, but you know, compounded with the, you know, appreciation and that sort of stuff, it's, it has served me really well. But that's a caution, word of caution there, okay? Never underestimate your expenses, okay? I will have a chapter, a chapter about that. Going to the return of investment, quickly recapping, that's a, this is only a snapshot. This is the return of investment. It takes in consideration your income, depreciation of, of fixtures and fittings and capital growth and uh, again, all that sort of stuff. I, I would recommend that you, you have an e uh, a software at home on your computer. These days are very cheap and, and very affordable and it's all sorts of different worksheets and softwares that you can purchase for 150 bucks or less and they can do that. I no longer use one. I'm a rule of thumb type of guy, back of the envelope calculation. Um, but look, I will definitely look for more yield in this. And there's areas in Australia that you can find a 10% easily in there. So if you look at a 10%, uh, ex uh, your expenses are 3%, your repayment of the bank around 4%. By the way, you know, you should be pre-approved for uh, um, in a mortgage, so you, you will know exactly what your uh, interest rate will be and then you can calculate that. I mean, in, in the current uh, interest rate environment, if you get a 10% yield, you take out the 30% uh, expenses is 3%, so that's 7% left, repayments are four, so you get, a, you get around a um, net 3% return. That property is gonna be pos positive cash flow every single week of the year for years on. Okay, so that's it for, for now. Uh, please like, uh, hit the subscribe button, share with friends and family, go through it all again, how to analyze a property deal very easily, okay? You don't need to be across all sorts of terms. These are the basic things that you need to analyze a property deal. Again, feel free to add some comments, subscribe, um, and see you next time.